Hi guys and welcome back to Studio One with me Gregor. So today I want to show you one of my favorite applications of the chord track that you might not have seen like this before because it's certainly not covered on YouTube thus far and that's using the chord track as a songwriting and prototyping tool. What I mean by that is that I don't use the chord track so much on finished productions even though that works incredibly well as we've heard from some of the audio examples from last time but I really like to use it before even one note of my song is written. You see by just drawing in a couple of chords into the chord track that anything that I'm gonna write is gonna be transposed to I'm kind of more consistent and true to my original idea. This helps me very much when I'm striving to write a really sad ballad to not uh, be led astray and write a melodic trance banger all of a sudden, which sometimes happens, or more often than I'd like to admit. Not only does the chord track allow me to stay consistent and true to the original idea, but I also start writing chords that I would normally not even know how to play, because it's so easy to just select them and see what happens. All right, but that's enough talking. Let me show you how I like to do this in action and hopefully you find this inspiring. So this is the template that I like to use for this kind of workflow. I have four tracks in total. I have my drums here, then I have my bass, then I have the melody or lead and the harmony, the pad. And that's all the four elements that we need to get a basic song idea going. And yeah, I start out with the drums, working my way down but keeping it real simple. Nothing of what I'm gonna play now is ending up in the actual song. This is just about prepping the chord track. All right, here goes. And then I just duplicate that and that's ready to go. All right, that's that. Now we go to the bass. and just play a very simple bass line where I don't focus too much on the melody. I'm rather, you know, focusing on the groove and the feel and that is just playing nicely together with the drum part. That's already enough. Next we go to the lead sound and once again it doesn't really matter what we play. This is just so that we find the chord progression for the chord track. This is not the compositional stage yet. Perfectly fine. And last but not least, I'm just gonna draw in a pad, just a very basic chord. So I wanna go for D minor as my root chord in the song, like this. And just duplicate that with the D key a couple times. And if I play it now, it's not gonna sound very exciting yet, of course. Because everything is just in D minor all the time, right? So that's not really interesting. But what I can do now is just Take this basic chord, drag it to the chord track. It's gonna be automatically detected as D minor. And now I'm just gonna use the slice tool to set the points where I'd like these chord progression transitions to happen. So I wanna start out with a D minor. And then it's really just a question of try and error. I've just opened up the chord selector with the double click here. Now one really cool update that we got with version 4.5 is that we can now audition chords uh, by just clicking on the respective section in the arranger and that makes the listening process so much faster than when we have to use the listening tool all the time or when we have to press play pause nonstop. What's also great is that we can choose one of our existing instruments in the song as the preview sound. So we don't have to use the default sound here, we can just choose the pad that we are using in our actual track and then by clicking on the chord in the chord track, hear what it would sound like in context. This is super convenient and super fast. Okay, so first I wanna go for a D minor, then I wanna go for maybe F major, then we could go for maybe G minor and then maybe C major. Yeah, that's kind of nice, maybe C minor. Yeah, that sounds kind of all right. And then I'll just press play. Okay. 
ending is a bit too dramatic for my taste. Uh, let's go with... Actually, tell you what. Let's go with... The C here. And then G minor here. How about that? Now the really cool thing is that everything is following to the chord track now. If I go ahead and I want to play a major chord instead on my pad because I think, ah oh, yeah, maybe I want to do something else now, see what happens. Right? C major? Immediately turned into minor. This ensures that I'm staying true to my original idea. But in case I want to keep what I just did, it's as easy as deactivating the chord track, disabling the chord follow mode for the track, or simply deleting the chord event in the chord track. Okay, and there we have it. This is our chord structure right here. Now we can just go ahead and delete all of the events that we previously recorded, and now we can start out the song with a fresh blank piece of paper, but we're guaranteed that it's going to have a certain mood to it. Exactly what we wanted. If you practice this workflow a little bit, I guarantee you that your outcomes are going to sound much closer to your initial ideas than previously.